That's right. We are going to do the news, and it has been far too long. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Clyde Plays News. My name is Clyde. Today, we are going to talk about some of the greatest things, and maybe just the things that are happening. They might not be great. I guess we'll find out. We're going to talk about things that are going on in World of Warships for the news. Uh, of course, uh, our top story today is all about Wisconsin, which is coming to a dockyard near a dockyard near you. But first, Let's take a look at some of these other stories that we've got. That's our top story. This is the story we're looking at first. This is all about a closed test run of new French destroyers. It says, in a future update, because they're not going to tell us when it's going to happen, we, will, we plan to add a new destroyer branch to the French tech tree. To celebrate this announcement, we are hosting a community camouflage contest where players will have an opportunity to design a permanent camouflage for the tier seven la hardy i don't know why i decided to say it that way i just did show your creativity and get a chance to earn such valuable rewards as containers that are guaranteed to drop premium ships that's pretty cool of course the winning design will be added to the game we've seen this a bunch of times guys if you've seen some of the other permanent camos that they've added to the game that were community uh, designed the one for huron was uh, which looks like a killer whale um was added that way there was another one for the Italian destroyer, was it Avieri, I think? Um, got a permanent camo designed by the community. And this is not the first time they've done it. Uh, so definitely looking at uh, a cool opportunity for the more artistic minded among you. Let's take a look here. It says, uh, six new ships will be added to the game. I'm not gonna be able to pronounce these very well. If you speak French, I am sorry. I hope Berezhkov is not here. Uh, Le Droit. Uh, I'm just going to say Duck Affelt because there's no way I'm going to be able to do that correctly in French. La Hardy, La Venturier, La Venturier, I don't know. Uh, Orage and Cassard. These, these ships will be armed with main battery guns ranging from 120 millimeters. That's very small. That's like a British caliber. We expect to see 120s on uh, ships from UK um, to 130 millimeters. The tier five will have four single barrels. Tier six will have two twin turrets, one at each end, and a single turret in the middle. Oh, that's interesting. And the tier seven through uh, ten will have twin. Will have three twin turrets, uh, with one in the front and two in the aft. So that's kind of like an interesting turret or gun configuration for destroyers. Uh, for torpedoes, these ships will have two triple tube torpedo launchers at tier five and six, one triple tube and two twin launchers at tier seven. Oh, that's interesting. Um, tier 8 and 9 will have three triple tube launchers, and Tier 10 will have four triple tube launchers. Those must be dedicated to the port and starboard sides. They appear to be, yeah. Okay, so that's pretty traditional. Um, that's a lot of torpedoes, though, in the Tier 10. Please note the branch is currently under development, and these ship models are still not finalized. Obviously, they're very low on texture. Um, gameplay with additional technical characteristics will come later. So we don't know what the torp range is going to be, Pop Dart. Um, they've got the Orage, or O-Rage. -O um, I don't know how <laughs> to pronounce that. Uh, but the Tier 9 there, which looks pretty cool, actually. I love uh, this little radar dish up top. And then, of course, this big brick of a superstructure. Double barrel turret up front. Uh, two double barrel turrets out back, which you can see here. And, of course, the torpedo launchers in the middle. And then here's the Cassard, or Cassard. Cassard. This uh, boat is a uh, tier 47 class destroyer uh, <laughs> representing the first series of destroyers built for the French Navy after World War II. Cassard named after the 18th century French naval officer. Anyway, we'll stop doing that because no one wants any more of that. But um, we love a good French destroyer, and I am hopeful that this is a new and fun, cool line of French destroyers. Will they be gunboats? Will they be torpedo boats? We are not sure. That accent is a bad accent, Biggles. It's called a bad accent. But that is the new Franche Destroyers. We are going to go to our next story. This one here is about some other new ships. We'll talk about Wisconsin soon. I know people are geeked about that. This is the, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this, Incheon? Incheon? I'm not sure how to pronounce this one. Uh, but this says it is an alternative design for a heavy cruiser 
with rapid firing artillery developed in the United States in the 1940s. Had she been implemented in metal, the ship could have joined the Republic of Korea in the 1950s. She was named after the city of Incheon, one of the most important ports in that country. Incheon. There you go. Ah, Mike says that the French destroyers are torpedo focused according. You, you mean on the official stream, Mike? That's good to know. Blending characteristics of both US Navy heavy cruisers and Pan-Asian cruisers, artillery and third, <laughs> artillery enthusiasts. Hello, I am a, I am an enthusiast for artillery. Uh, I'm a big fan of artillery ships. Uh, artillery enthusiasts are sure to enjoy, enjoy Incheon. Um, her main battery of four twin 203s, uh, auto-loading turrets, that means fast reloads. Because um, we talk about how Des Moines has an auto-loader, right? That, that's why she has such a fast reload. Um, gives her excellent damage output with both high penetration HE shells. I wonder what high penetration means. Maybe they have details down below. And AP shells with improved Rico angles, improved ricochet angles. Her concealment and short cooldown Pan-Asian smoke generator, ooh, that's cool, will allow her to play aggressively and create her own cover, while her access to deep water torpedoes and a torpedo reload booster, similar to that one on Genon, will help deter enemies from getting too close. The low number of tubes will make them more of supplement to her main battery. So this is going to be a gun-focused cruiser, a heavy cruiser with an auto loader, uh, but she's going to have deep water torps and smoke, kind of like we see on Gina. That's pretty cool. Eight 203s with a six second reload. Okay, that's pretty effective. Um, that looks like American style initial muzzle velocities. 2.05 sigma is good. And um, what's the range? Do we have range? 16.1 kilometers. So that's not bad either. This could be kind of an interesting boat for people who like this mix of capabilities. She's going to be reasonably accurate kind of medium range, a little bit shorter than long range. Obviously, we'd like at tier 10 to have like an 18, 19 kilometer range um, for a cruiser. This one being 16 is a little bit on the shorter side, but it's longer than some of the US cruisers that we have up there. Um, it's longer than ships we traditionally think of as having short ranges. She's got deep water torpedoes that reach out 13.5 kilometers. They go 70 knots, 18,000 damage almost. Uh, it is two quad launchers. So she's only got one launcher per side, it looks like, and that launcher carries four torpedoes. AA defense is always kind of hard to read the tea leaves on, but it looks pretty powerful. It looks medium plus. Um, are you going to stop all the planes? No, no ship does that anymore, but there we go. 33 knots seems not slow. That's not bad for a cruiser. I'd have to look at the list to see how she really slots in there. And then she's got damage control party, smoke generator, def AA. So no sensors. You're still not getting a hydro. You're still not getting a radar on this, you'd go in smoke instead of sensors. And she's got a repair party and a torpedo reload booster. So she's gonna have five slots, which is cool. That's pretty powerful. But of course she is still gonna be lacking the sensors that you might you might have hoped for um, on a cruiser that has uh, traits from the American cruiser line. This is one that everyone is excited about and it's really unfortunate we don't have a picture. This is the USS Johnston, which is a very famous uh, Taffy 3, thank you Biggles, Taffy 3 uh, Destroyer. If you don't know what Taffy 3 is, there was, and I'm not the world's greatest, you know, World War II naval historian, but there was a, a great battle um, which uh, involved the Yamato Battle Group, um, a bunch of escort carriers and a bunch of destroyers, including Johnston and Sam W. Roberts, um, kind of tin can sailors kind of story is what we're talking about here. The Johnston and the Samuel B. Roberts, some other destroyer escorts and destroyers dove in on much better armed, much more powerful Japanese ships. I think they sunk like, th I want to say it's three heavy cruisers from the Japanese Navy. And they did a whole bunch of, uh, uh, of, of damage to other ships. And of course the aircraft were doing an incredible amount of damage to those ships as well. So this very um, out outclassed uh, group of American uh, escort carriers and destroyer escorts and things um, did a big, did a bunch of damage to the uh, Japanese fleet. Really cool story. Um, recommend reading up on it because it is interesting. Um, Sergeant Soy says Task Force 3, and they call them Taffy 3. Yep, absolutely. 
um, a Fletcher class destroyer that commenced her naval service in October of 1943. The ship bears the name of a Union Navy Lieutenant John W. Johnston, a distinguished hero of the American Civil War. Despite only brief combat service, the Johnston engaged in numerous military campaigns that unfolded in the Pacific Theater. The warship met her demise, shrouded in glory during a fierce confrontation with a Japanese squadron under the command of battleship Yamato during uh, the Battle of Samar on October 25th, 1944. Johnston isn't just another Fletcher. Uh, this is what Mountain's talking about. Mountain 199 says there's no way she survives uh, testing. No ship survives testing with the original stats, but uh, this ship does right now. She sounds really cool. Uh, let's keep reading and we'll, we'll learn a little bit more about why she sounds so cool. Uh, Johnson's main battery of five 127 millimeter main uh, guns will be some supplemented with a burst fire mode and sap shells. Combined with her good concealment, this will make her extremely deadly in short engagements with enemy destroyers. Whew. Excuse me. Her burst fire is somewhat unique in that Johnson will actually put out more damage per minute in this firing mode than firing normally. Captains will want to make sure that they hit their first shots, which may be a challenge considering her typically bad ballistics. Backing up her main battery is the expected load of 10 torpedoes, with characteristics similar to those of gearing that will punch out to extreme range, albeit on a very long reload. Rounding out her arsenal are the engine boost, defensive AA fire consumables typically found on other US Navy destroyers occupying the same slot. In terms of play style, Johnston will get uh, will favor getting up close and personal with enemy destroyers and making quick work of them with sap and burst fire. Aim will be the key. If a burst is missed, Johnson's damage output will suffer, so captains may wish to use her normal firing mode to adjust their aim beforehand. That's a technique that you should use already on ships like Bazan and other things like that. Type, uh, what is it? Type 18 says Johnston feels like a dockyard ship. Maybe. She could be dockyard. She could also be research bureau. They put weird, quirky stuff in there, too. I'd be really interested to see how they're going to release this ship. Her long duration American smoke generator and long range torpedoes will allow her to put damage on larger targets from safety as well. But of course, caution must be exercised when dealing with enemy surveillance radar. 17,000 hit points, 527 millimeter guns, shooting 12.5. That's very Fletcher, very typical stuff. Damage there looks pretty normal, although I'd want to refer to that, so don't quote me on this, but I think that's pretty typical Fletcher damage. 1800 for maximum HE, 2500 for sap. Of course, sap, of course, is not typical for a Fletcher. 36 millimeters of pen on the sap. This is what's so special about that. Oh, I wish I could give you guys uh, Johnson, USS Johnson's for uh, pizza points. That'd be amazing. Um, so 36 millimeters of pen with that sap is going to allow you to beat up destroyers. It's going to allow you to beat up uh, uh, cruisers and even farm parts of battleships. Well, maybe not any new parts of battleships, but uh, the bow and the stern of, uh, of heavier ships for sure, uh, cruisers in, in particular. 792 meters per second is about right in terms of just common velocity and things like that. Mountain says Johnson looks just like all the other 172 fletches. You bet she does. Four and a half second reload. Burst fire. This is interesting. Is this a combat instructions? Or is it? I think this is. I want to understand how this is going to work. If the burst fire work gives her more DPM than regular shooting, you would never use regular shooting. I guess if you did the burst fire, you'd still have longer reloads. So there might be still times you want to switch back. It might be okay. It might be all right. Um, you would. You might want to shoot more often. I'm thinking that's going to have some adjustment, Biggles, and or what Mountain just said. It'll have a cooldown. That was the thing I was wondering is, you know, if it's more like a uh, reload booster, then it would have a cooldown, right? Or if it's like a combat instructions, like you charge up on Almirante Grau, those kinds of things, right? Or um, there's a battleship where you charge it up by hitting things, right? That's coming out, um, which I think might be Wisconsin. I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll find out soon. Uh, but uh, let's let's keep reading. She's going to have torpedo tubes. They said kind of a long reload. What's the reload? 170 seconds is almost three minutes. That's a really long time. These are 13 and a half kilometers, so not quite as long a range as gearing torpedoes, even though that's kind of how they describe them. 66 knots is reasonable, but not fast. First slot is damage control party. Second slot is smoke generator. Third slot is engine boost. And alternatively, you can swap the engine boost for def AA. Well, 
I am excited. Color me excited. I'd love to have another Fletcher in my port. And of course, if it's something like USS Johnston, uh, doubly excited to add it to the port. So really hopeful that this ship comes out. I hope that it's released in a way that makes her available to players, um, you know, and she isn't difficult to get uh, or doesn't have like a long wait period before we can get her in a in a non weird way, right? So I, you know, for me, I'd be hoping for steel. I'd be hoping for um, research points or, or, you know, somebody mentioned a dockyard a minute ago, right? Um, I think it was, yeah, it was type 18 mentioned dockyard, dockyard a second ago. One of those things would make me feel a lot better than loot boxes. We'll see how that goes. Uh, that's a separate discussion from whether or not I think the ship looks interesting because I think it just does. It looks cool. Let's go ahead and go to our top story. This is all about the USS Wisconsin, uh, which is has been announced as a dockyard ship and with some interesting parameters to the dockyard, which I think are going to make people pretty excited. So Wisconsin is coming to the dockyard. Um, also some words in here about asymmetric battles and things like that. Let's keep going. Big Whiskey has finally made its way onto our virtual seas. That's right, 13.3, who wrote this? That's right, 13.3 brings along a new dockyard to host the construction of tier 10 USS Wisconsin. I like this camo. It is not an exciting looking camo, but I think it looks good. Um, I like kind of the two-tone. I think they've done a good job with it. A little bit of a, a red stripe on the bottom where they've got the anti-fouling uh, coating is pretty cool. And of course, they got a big gold 64 on the front. I think that looks great. Um, no, it's not intricate, but I think it looks great. Here's the deal. Welcome to the party, pal. Who wrote this? <laughs> Here's the deal, y'all. This is going to be a 30-phase dockyard. Nah, man. Thanks for the follow, Mortis. 28 of those phases can be completed through dockyard missions. And uh, <laughs> this is the most casually written one of these I've ever seen. You read that right. Only two phases will need to be brought uh, to need to be bought purchased, in other words, if you put in the battles to get big whiskey. A starter pack with two phases will be available for 3,200 doubloons. That's okay. 3,200 doubloons is like $13 US. That's really cheap. That's a tier 10 too. I wonder how hard those missions are going to be. You'll be able to complete these missions all the way through updates 13.3 and 13.4, with the dockyard itself remaining open until the start of 13.6. That means you can do the missions in 13.3 and in 13.4, and you can buy stages through 13.6 is probably what that means. You've got plenty of time. The good news doesn't stop there. Getting to stage 20 of the dockyard will net you the West Virginia 44. For anyone who may have missed out on her last summer, now is your chance to get your hands on those sweet, sweet secondaries. Uh, there she is, ladies and gentlemen, West Virginia 44. And that's free. If you get to stage, you can get to stage 20 for free. So you can get a free West Virginia 44. That's pretty cool. I wonder about that, Dr. Afson. I think I think it's possible that the missions could be pretty tough and that they're going to count on us getting tired and being like, whatever, I'll just buy a few phases. But even if you had to buy, you know, most dockyard ships cost you between $20 and $30 um, if you buy the booster packs. You know, even if you had to buy, you know, 20 bucks worth of stuff for a tier 10, that's not terrible. I love the idea of getting a tier 10 for 13 bucks, though. That, that's a good deal. Um, so hopefully the missions are not totally crazy. No, 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 man. I don't think they're going to go that far again. I think they learned that that's a that's a good way to sow discord in the community. The original PR event was was pretty epic in terms of that. So that's pretty cool, guys. We got Wisconsin coming to the dockyard. Excited for this ship. Um, there's some interesting stuff about Wisconsin that's not in this article. Um, the way that she works is going to be kind of interesting. I think this is the ship that has the, the comment instructions where when you hit stuff consistently with it, you can actually unlock I think it's basically like a reload booster. If I'm wrong, I will put text on the screen that says Clyde doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, but I, I'm fairly confident that this is that ship. Um, I've been reading about uh, different ones here. Next, they're saying, so you tell us you like, so you're telling us you like asymmetric battles, huh? Well, good news, it's coming back in 13.3. We're gonna keep it exactly the same as last time with the following parameters. Um, you can play tier six through tens, five ships versus a bunch of bots. People love this mode. If you enjoyed asymmetric battles, good news. It's coming back in 13.3. I think the patch 13.2 is coming up like a week, a week and a half away. Um, and so we're gonna have 13.2 here. And then, you know, patches are usually five or six weeks. And then we'll have 13.3 here. As for bots, they'll continue to be a team of 12 ships. <coughs> Excuse me. That are two tiers lower than each tier represented on the enemy team. That means if you're rocking a team that has nines and tens in it, 
you'll see sevens and eights. Additional port changes, lightning round. We're gonna list who wrote this. They got so, I, first of all, I enjoy this silly mode of conversation. This is fun. But like, is this gonna be the, is this the new thing? Like, is this how they're gonna do this now? No one likes being DMCA'd, so we're adding a special setting for streamers to allow them to disable licensed music in the game client and have the default music played instead. I like this. I'm a streamer. Um, keep your containers, keeping count of your containers for guaranteed drops is a bit challenging. So we're adding a guaranteed drop counter in the armory. This is cool. I know people are big fans of this uh, idea. Um, I think this is neat, but uh, as we mentioned earlier, it is, uh, you know, it's not as big a news as, you know, Wisconsin being available in the dockyard. But I think people are going to dig that. When is my guaranteed drop and when does that reset? I think that'll really help the community to understand when those things reset. We'll start to learn how that works. I think initially players are going to have a lot of questions. Hang on, why did that reset? What's going on? I don't understand. Um, but I think largely it's going to be a cool uh, feature for, for people who like to keep track of that stuff. Um, and now you don't have to have a spreadsheet or track all that data on the side. How, how cool is that? I think that's nice. We're temporarily, I like this too. Did you guys see this? We're temporarily testing out a new concept, a permanent camouflage that adds a custom animation. So we're introducing these super, super matism. I don't know how to pronounce that, permanent camouflage. Essentially, a player could equip this camouflage to a ship of their choosing, and the enemy ships destroyed by this ship will have a unique animation upon destruction. I think that seems kind of neat. I think they could make it really stupid, but I think they could make it really cool too. Players will be able to get one of these camouflages for free in the update 13.3 um, and can purchase three additional ones for credits. But as this concept is in testing, the camouflage is temporary and will be, will be removed from your accounts. So if you spend those credits, don't think that's permanent. This is temporary um, with the release of 13.4. We want to see how these camouflages are received by players before we add them as a permanent thing. So here's what the camo looks like. It's kind of like brown and yellow. I don't know. Um, I don't know that I think this is the most beautiful camo in the world. It's not bad. Um, the concept is kind of fun. Like, look at this. They've got like a custom explosion when you blow up a bad guy. I don't know if this is something that enemies will see or just you'll see. I'm guessing it's something everybody gets to see. Um, I don't know that this explosion is really uh, the thing. I sort of like some of the shell, cell shaded na nature of it, but the rest of it I could do without. Um, I don't know. I think that could be kind of interesting. I could imagine that, like, have you ever seen the smoke that comes out of the smokestacks of the ARP Congos, the ARP Miyokos? Um, that smoke is all cell shaded and looks kind of cool. If your explosions when you blew up an enemy ship looked like that, I think that'd be kind of neat too. Um, we've added several Golden Week items to the game. Chikuma 2 Golden, a ship with similar parameters to the Tier 9 Japanese hybrid cruiser Chikuma, but with a unique appearance. Oh, that's cool. Um, a Golden Week permanent camouflage for Mogami. They're going to give it the lacquer camo, it looks like. Uh, Commander uh, Ashi Ashikagateru and the Samurai's Pride flag. Um, looks like a cool captain. I hope she has a custom uh, voice pack. We love captains with custom voice packs. And then a cool Samurai flag. That's rad. I'm going to totally put that on some of my ships if I get it. They've got Warship Master's patch and flag. That's pretty cool. And then, uh, let's see, added the On the Bank of the Rhine premium container. It gives you a chance to win Weizbaden. Weizbaden. Weizbaden? Weizbaden. And it says here, there will be an alternative way to unlock Weizbaden. That's it, boys and girls. Everybody, thank you so much for watching Clyde Plays News. I hope that you enjoyed this and you're excited about the new ships. We've got French destroyers coming. We've got Johnston showing up. We've got a new uh, pan-Asian cruiser, Incheon, showing up. We've got Wisconsin coming to the game. And we've got, of course, a chance to get West Virginia 44 for free. If you're watching this later on YouTube and you've never been over to the Twitch stream, why don't you stop by? It's great. We have a lot of fun over there. We give out prizes and things. It'd be a hoot to have you join us. Come on over to twitch.tv slash Live. If you're watching this on Twitch, we're going to go back and play some more video games right now. We do have a giveaway going. I don't remember what it's for. I think it's a uh, CC container. If you haven't done it yet, exclamation point pizza, get entered to win. Let's end this show. Goodbye. This has been the news on Clyde Plays Live.